Chemistry lecture number 10, Properties of Matter. Uh, this lecture is going to be uh, definitions and concepts, so you just need to get these definitions memorized and be able to cite examples of the uh, concepts and definitions. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Now, matter has properties or characteristics, and some examples of uh, characteristics or properties include the mass, how heavy something is, volume, how much space it takes up, uh, the color of the matter, uh, flammability, and resistance to rusting. And there are lots of other uh, characteristics that uh, matter has. Uh, properties of matter uh, tend to fall into two categories, physical and chemical. And some of these are both uh, physical and chemical properties. We'll discuss these in a little bit more detail. Uh, a physical property is a property that can be observed without changing the sample's composition. So, for example, the mass of an object, how heavy it is. Well, we can tell how heavy something is without changing it into a new substance. Uh, how heavy a coin is, uh, you can just weigh that and it doesn't turn into something else. Uh, volume, length, density, color, melting and boiling point. All these things uh, you can measure and observe without changing the identity of the substance. And whether or not a substance is a solid, liquid, or gas is also a physical property. To observe that something is solid, uh, you don't have to turn it into another substance. <clears throat> physical properties tend to fall into uh, two categories, extensive properties and intensive properties. An extensive property, a property that depends on the amount of matter present. For example, if I keep adding water to a bucket, the mass of water increases. Mass is an extensive property of matter. The more matter you have, the greater the mass. So if I have a container and I pour water into it, and that water gets, uh, container gets heavier when I have uh, water in it, and if I add a little bit more water, it's going to get even heavier. So uh, the weight, the mass of the object, uh, changes or it increases as we increase the amount of uh, matter. So mass is an example of a uh, extensive property. Uh, other examples of extensive property include volume and length. Uh, in the case of volume, the more water or the more matter I put in here, the more space it takes up. So um, volume is an extensive property. Intensive property. It's a property that does not depend on the amount of matter present. Now suppose I have a container of water that's half filled. I then add water until the glass is completely filled. Does the color of the water change? No. Uh, the color remains the same. Color does not depend on the amount of water, and thus color is an intensive property. So I have a container of water, and uh, I'm going to add, you notice that uh, the water has a color, or maybe a lack of color, and then if I add some more water to it. Does that change the color? Does it make it darker? Um, does it make it bluer or make it greener? Not really for all intents and purposes. Uh, the more water I add, uh, nothing happens to the color. Uh, so that means that the color of the water is an intensive property. Other examples of intensive properties include hardness, boiling point, melting point, density, and malleability. Uh, malleability is the ability of a metal to be hammered into thin sheets. Uh, having more or less metal doesn't affect its ability to be uh, flattened. And the malleability of metals uh, allows you to do some uh, interesting things. For example, coins are made of metal. and Malleable means that you hit it and it just flattens out. It doesn't uh, shatter and uh, with some metals are extremely malleable. You just keep hitting them and hitting them and hitting them and they get flatter and flatter and flatter. And uh, this property allows you to make neat little trinkets like uh, these. Uh, you go to tourist places like museums and you put a penny in this little machine and then the machine will squash the penny and then print a neat little souvenir of where you've been. Now, this souvenir is from a, uh, I guess it's a train museum I visited in uh, Pennsylvania, and then uh, I found a machine that squashes a quarter, so I had a quarter squashed and make a little souvenir. And this one says uh, Monte Carlo Casino, Las Vegas. Hmm, not that I'm encouraging gambling, the odds are always against you, so uh, don't gamble. Okay, so these flattened coins are examples of the malleability of metal, the ability to flatten things.
Now notice that for all the types of physical properties mentioned, the substance stays the same. Um, the substance does not have to change into a new substance to observe the mass, volume, or boiling point. And this is in contrast to a chemical property. A chemical property is the ability or inability of a substance to combine with or change into another substance. Uh, most of the time the substance has to change into a new material to observe the chemical property. Examples of chemical properties include flammability, the ability to rust and whether something will dissolve in acid. Flammability is the ability of something to catch on fire. When things that catch on fire, um, they're combined with oxygen, so it's really uh, the property of whether or not something will combine with oxygen. Uh, the ability to rust, well, that's actually uh, another property of combining with oxygen. Uh, and whether something will dissolve in acid. Acid can uh, break apart some molecules and uh, other molecules, acids cannot uh, break apart. Metals dissolve uh, very nicely in acid, but uh, plastics are very resistant to acids. So every time you see something rust or burn or dissolve in acid, a new substance is made. And uh, most of the time for chemical properties, you can't see it unless a new substance is made. Okay, a um, few more other uh, physical properties. So we're backtracking a little bit. We talked about chemical properties. Now we're backtracking and getting back to uh, physical properties. Uh, states of matter. Uh, state of matter is a physical property. You can see if something is a solid, liquid, or gas without turning it into another substance. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, three physical states of matter. Solid. It's a form of matter that has a definite shape and a definite volume, and the particles that make up a solid are packed very close together. One characteristic of a solid is that if you transfer the solid, here's some solids. Whee! So if you transfer the solids from uh, one location to another, so if I transfer the solid from one location to the other, it keeps the same shape. All right, so this uh, cube little shape is going to be a cube no matter where I uh, move it around. And uh, if you just let it sit there, it just keeps the same shape. I can knock it around a little bit, and it keeps the same shape. It takes up the same amount of space. It keeps the same volume. And uh, the reason why it does this is because the particles that make up the solid are packed very close together. And since the uh, particles are packed very close together, they don't move as much. So if they don't move as much, they're not going to change their shape, and they're not going to change their volume. Liquid, on the other hand, is a form of matter that can flow from one location to another. So, here's liquid, and you can see how it flows from one location to another. And one characteristic of uh, liquids is that when you place it in a container, it takes the shape of the container. For example, here I have some uh, water with some food coloring in it, and it's in a circular shaped container, and when I pour it from uh, one container to the other, the shape of the liquid uh, changes. It went from being a circular shape to now kind of a square shape. The volume is uh, constant and doesn't change. You can't compress the liquid and reduce its volume. So the amount of space this water takes up is the same no matter what container I put it into. I can keep it in there or I can you know, put it back into here. Shape changes, but the amount of space it takes up is going to be the same. Um, and this occurs because the particles of a liquid are close together, uh, so that's why the volume doesn't change, but they're further enough apart so that they can slide past each other and change shape. Okay. <clears throat> Gas. It's like a liquid. Uh, it can f uh, it's a form of matter that can flow from one location to another. Um, it takes the shape of the container it occupies, but unlike a liquid, it expands and fills the entire volume of the container, and thus the volume of gas can change uh, through expansion. Uh, it expands through the volume of the container it occupies. So, um, by way of simple example, suppose I have um, a gas in this container. Ugh. Let's see if I get that lid on. Okay, so I have a gas in this container, and then I want to transfer the gas to this container. Well, if I were somehow, uh, let's say it's like a heavy gas like carbon dioxide and I can pour it uh, like water. If I were to transfer the gas from this container to this container, um, the gas would then 
change shape. It would take the shape of the new container it's in and it would expand to fill the entire volume. So the shape would change if it went from here to here and the volume would change if it went from uh, here to here. And the reason this occurs is because the particles that make up a gas are far apart and moving very fast. So if they're far apart, um, they can take any shape of the container it's in, and since they're moving very fast and are far apart, they just move fast and expand outward and they just fill up whatever space uh, they're in. So that's how gases can uh, change both shape and volume. Uh, liquids can only change uh, their shape. They can't change their volume. In solids, they can't change shape or volume. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 10, Properties of Matter.